Hey, everybody, and welcome to the July 2019 Ask Us Anything with draft to digital My name is Mark Lefebvre, and I'm the director of, what am I the director of? I'm the director of business development at draft to digital and these two very good-looking people with me today are, we'll start with Dan. Dan Wood, I'm the director of author relations. Uh, I am Kevin Thomason, I'm the director of marketing. Excellent. Which should fit in real nice with this episode. <laughs> That's yeah, you're answering everything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do have some uh, live questions, but I wanted to start with a, one of the many questions. Now, just just to let you guys know, thank you guys so much. Uh, when you registered for it uh, in for our previous uh, webinar, we have close to 300 questions from authors. We are not going to get to all 300 questions, although fortunately, many of them overlap. So what we did is we dug through all of the questions that came in. And we uh, hope to uh, address as many of them as possible. But what we've done in a case like this, and I'm going to toss this first question out right now, guys, is uh, we sort of amalgamated some of the questions together. So the very first question is, what are some strategies that an author can use as a beginning author to find an audience for their specific book? For example, a children's picture book, maybe, or perhaps it's contemporary fiction. Maybe it's a niche genre book. What about poetry? So basically thinking about those types of examples, what are some strategies that a beginning author can use to, to find, find those first readers? Yeah. You know, first group of readers. Um, one, one useful thing to do is to get involved in uh, little communities and organizations and groups uh, that are focused on that topic. So for example, on Facebook, there are tons of uh, little groups and communities that you can be a part of that are aimed at uh, your type of book. So like I, I'm a thriller writer. There are tons of groups on Facebook that are aimed at uh, thriller readers. Um, so you join those groups. Now you don't go in and start spamming them <laughs> and saying buy my book or even I have a book. You become an active part of the communities and, and become someone that these people trust um, as, a, as one of them. You know, you, you participate in conversations, you participate in if they have like surveys and group activities and, you know, whatever is going on, you become an active member of this. And then uh, over time, people will start talking to you and you can organically and casually start to mention that you write picture books or you write thriller novels, just like, you know, the ones that we talk about and love. So being an active part of a community is a real good place to start. It's, it's not instantaneous which is why a lot of authors get turned off by the idea, but uh, it's good long tail growth, we'll say. Okay, uh, that's fantastic. Thanks, Kevin. Dan, anything to add to that? I totally agree. Um, know, know exactly what reader base you're aiming for and where they hang out. Um, the other part of it would be to get involved in the community of authors who write some more things to you uh, because they're gonna know where those readers are. Um, We've seen a lot of authors do things like email swaps, um, like to their their different list, and so that's a way to find some of those readers as well. So just to clarify, by an email swap, you mean so if I write thrillers and Kevin writes thrillers, um, my audience may like Kevin's book, so that means I'm going to be recommending his book to my readers, right? That's the kind of swap you mean, not hey, I'm going to give you all my email addresses because that's kind of not very okay. yeah, exactly that's you, technically you, illegal I think, right? yeah. emails to them but yeah you what you would do in general is you can either recommend their book to your readers if you just like them and you love their book um, and your readers appreciate that because they're always looking for something new and great or um, you, you two can swap like if he thinks his readers will like your books and vice versa then you can send out a blast about his book and he can send out a blast about your book Okay. And by the way, and I'll throw a third one in there, uh, and then we can we can jump into something else. But this is a real handy thing. Um, don't underestimate the power of content, uh, and by that I mean things like blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, that sort of thing. Um, if you can create some content uh, that is attractive to your potential reader, you stand a much better chance of uh, drawing them in and maybe getting them interested in your your work so uh, blog is is particularly good for this uh, especially if you like sort of simulcast it in places like medium where you get a broader reach but if you regularly write on a topic related to your books if it's like children's picture books um, you might do something like review other authors picture books 
talk about the process of developing them, talk about the art. You know, there's lots of topics you could explore that would allow you to connect with that reader. And then if on that blog you have, you know, you can, there it's perfectly acceptable to put things like, hey, I've got a book uh, that fits in this genre. You might want to check it out and put a little thumbnail of the cover and a little blurb about the book and a link, a universal book link from bookstoread.com to go buy that book. Okay, cool. So I want to jump into one of the questions that was asked in the question and answer, sort of the live Q&A that we have here. And this is a question from Benjamin. And he says, when I create a Facebook account for my brand, I'm assuming for his book brand or author brand, should it be a personal account or a business page? If business, should I select business or brand or public figure? What do you guys recommend? Do you want to start with that, Kevin? Yeah, so I would, uh, I just, I'm pausing because I, I have a tendency to jump in and talk about this stuff and let everyone else just kind of sit. Um, Director of marketing you. <laughs> so I, I would establish yourself, you, since Facebook lets you choose a brand as your, uh, you know, persona, uh, with that, I would go with that. Uh, you could do public figure. It really doesn't matter all that much. That's not going to change much uh, for you. There's no additional options per choice or whatever. But if you uh, select brand, uh, it kind of fits a little better. It's too bad they don't offer author or uh, something along those lines. You would think they would by this point because uh, there are plenty of authors out there that do that. If you want, um, if you if it would make you feel more comfortable, you might check out other authors and look at what they chose. I believe you can actually see that. Um, and you could always hit them up if you can't see it on Facebook. But, you know, you're developing yourself as a brand anyway. Uh, if you happen to be using your own name, uh, that's fine. If you happen to be using a pin name, you're trying to build up a, a personality around that author name. So choosing brand and going that way is probably the best choice. Okay, cool. Uh, anything to add to that, Dan? Uh, not really. Uh, I would say I've heard that organic reach is pretty low. Like when people follow you through those brand pages, Facebook wants you to spend money to promote those posts. Yeah. Um, and so one workaround I've seen authors doing is starting their own groups and, you know, maintaining a, an actual conversation uh, over time with people because then, you know, they're going to see it. Whereas if you just post it on your Facebook page, uh, a very small percentage of them are gonna, ever going to see it. Yeah. I, um, I may also share a personal, I actually manage a bunch of different um, Facebook uh, pages for uh, some of my books. So I do ghost stories set in particular cities and towns. And so one of my most engaging ones is for spooky Sudbury. So Sudbury is a town in uh, mid Northern Ontario. And, and again, it's a book of ghost stories about Sudbury. The page itself, I, for every 10 posts I share, maybe one or two posts is actually about the book or about me. If I'm, you know, appearing somewhere or, or whatever, just for, for potential fans. But most of the posts that I share there are related to the town and the city. So that maybe there's a local musician who's being featured in a, in a local paper. Or maybe there's an interesting news item. For example, Moose walks through Tim Horton's drive through like Anything that's sort of fun and engaging with the community. Uh, for people who are very passionate about that town. Uh, and I find that kind of thing works. And it kind of strings back to what Kevin said about content marketing. Most of the things that I share there are things that are interesting and fascinating to the community. And the only thing that they have to do with my book is my book is also set there. So, uh, there, you know, there's so many different ways you can approach Facebook and the brand and the, and, and the, and the, and the targets. And in that particular case, the brand is the book that loves the town or the city. Um, I want to jump back to one of the pre-submitted questions from the giant batch. And it kind of relates to when we talked about that target audience, but how, what are some of the ways for an author to figure out who their ideal audience is or who their target audience is, no matter what their genre? Tarot. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Besides tarot and magic. Oh, I think I just had power cut off here. I'm sorry. Uh, I may have limited time because everything is on a backup UPS. So um, wow. <laughs> we'll, see, we will see, we'll see how it works. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. So why, why don't you start with your answer, Kevin? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, oh, God, I forgot the question now. Repeat the question. How, how, do, you was, find, how, do, how do you find out find ideal your readers. ideal audiences if you don't know? Okay. Again, I, I mean, that that's the same sort of uh, answer as we gave earlier about, uh, you know, 
how do you start building that reader list? And you go to where those folks hang out. Uh, if you're trying to identify who that should be, um, that I mean, that's where I would start actually. But you, you know, you know who's going to the type of reader that's going to be enjoying your books. You're going to have a pretty good idea of them. Uh, it's it might be good to start by just jotting down on a piece of paper or a digital file all the sort of characteristics of this person that you're trying to reach. Maybe they're a lot like you, or maybe you have a spouse uh, that that you write for. Um, start looking at who you want to pick the book up. And then that will tell you um, who your ideal reader is. You can start kind of creating a persona uh, that you can use that will help with marketing and everything else. Like constant reader that Stephen King uses. As the constant as reader, as right. King, his wife. Yeah, none of this is new, by the way. I'm stealing all <laughs> this from Stephen King and everyone else. <laughs> oh, you still Pretty impressed by my setup is still running, by the way. That's good. That will we'll hope to impressed. keep you hanging in there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump back to some of the questions that were submitted in the live Q&A. So uh, I can see that both Libby and Joan have asked about print distribution. So the question is, can you let us know where DDD is distributing our books? Um, will it say DDD is the publisher? And uh, the, a similar question is, uh, can I do paperbacks with DDD as well? I want more than ebooks. So they're uh, kind of covered, uh, two of those questions covered in one. Uh, we talked a little bit in the last chat about paperback, um, but we're still working. We've got that in beta. Um, if I remember correctly, it shows uh, whatever publisher name you gave us, uh, just about everywhere. Uh, so it'd be your publisher name. It wouldn't show draft to digital. Um, as far as where your book goes, we don't really have, we can't tell you exactly everywhere it goes because it just goes into the general uh, wholesale channel for books and so they're adding and subtracting retailers all the time and the wholesale channel as I understand is very similar to what you would get from Ingram spark for the most part it's identical yeah. from what yeah. from what we're told um, and we're partnering with IPG which is the same printer that handles uh, brands you've heard of like random house and Harlequin and others um, and every uh, the, the whole setup that we have is identical to what Ingram offers you but we don't charge you any money for it okay um and and as some of you may know we've been in uh d2d print beta for uh, a while an early beta and we're going to be expanding that soon uh alexis i should mention is uh, in the back end so she's monitoring our facebook group for us and looking for questions that she can share through an internal channel to us as well so hey alexis thanks for uh thanks for supporting us in that way uh, and she reminded us that we will be opening the print beta very very soon we can either try to drop a link in here in the in the comments or on the on the Facebook feed as well to let people know how they can get into that next level print beta so they can experiment with that as well. Does that make sense? And the, and the beta is fun. I mean, it's this this is a great program. <laughs> I can't wait until it's fully live where I can just give people an easy URL. But all my print books go through uh, DDD Print right now, and it's it's been fantastic. Okay. So uh, here's a question that came up, oh, maybe 50, 60, or 70, or 80 times uh, in the pre-submitted questions. And I bet you that someone's already asked it in the live uh, Q&A. But uh, so in a nutshell, what are the best methods for selling books to the non-Amazon retailers? How does an author get traction at places like Kobo, like Apple, or Nook? And can it be done through D2D, or, or do they have to go direct? So I... Uh... Finding traction is a great question. It takes a while sometimes. Uh, when I get this question at conferences, like where I start is A, you can't just dip your toe in. You can't just have one book available and expect that people are going to read it. There's a large number of readers that don't really buy a book from a new author until they have a number of books published. And so I would say getting three or four books uh, minimum available wide uh, is going to be something you're going to want to do before you're really going to want to push on marketing. Um, So the steps that we, we go through as, as we're talking with people on, and some of the one-on-ones that we've been doing is A, first we check your website to see are you even linking to the other retailers? There's your social media when, you're, when you have a new release, are you sending readers everywhere or are you sending them just to Amazon? Um, the retailers look at that when we uh, nominate books for promotions. Uh, they look, they see if you are linking to them and if you're not, odds are they're not gonna choose your book. Um, we were just in a, a meeting with a retailer that shall not be named, but they stressed again to us 
the importance of making sure you have links to your books on their websites. Those can be universal book links, so it's something we offer that lets you uh, post a link that will get your readers to whatever platform that they prefer to buy on. But you want to make sure that you're not just mentioning Amazon over and over. Um, take part in different promotional sites. Uh, BookBub is probably the most effective, so applying for the BookBub uh, daily deals or featured daily deals uh, whenever uh, you're eligible is really, really a great way to kickstart your success uh, at the wider platforms. Uh, take part in those international BookBub deals because we're seeing a, a big growth in international sales. Um, in this last year, international sales moved from being about 30% of draft to digital's overall sales to about 62% or not, to 38%. So it's a, a, a pretty big growth, and we're, we're starting to see other markets uh, move over or move towards digital a lot more lately. Uh, what, what other information would you share with them, Mark? Um, again, I, I would also let them know that it takes a long, long time. I mean, Amazon is the world's biggest bookstore. I mean, Prime Days was just a few days ago, and even the streets uh, where we live here in Canada were just filled with people, like shipping companies going back and forth, dropping things off. And that wasn't even books, right? It's all the things they sell. So they have millions and millions of more customers than just readers, whereas a place like Kobo is just readers. Uh, Apple has obviously a lot more customers, but not in the same engagement that Amazon does. Nook is only in the U.S., but it's still, the U.S. is a big population. But it takes a long time to develop a, a relationship or to develop a following on a platform. The thing that I would advise authors don't do is you don't pull your books out of exclusive to Amazon or you know publish them wide and then wait 30 days and go, well, nothing happened, I give up. Because every time you start, you know, at Kobo or Apple or Nook or any other places, you're starting from scratch. When you delist that book and remove it from that platform and then bring it back 90 days later for a short tour of duty and then give up again, you're starting from scratch every single time. And I've met authors over the years at conferences who I remember, you know, I even I was on stage once at Superstars writing seminars in Colorado Springs and I remember somebody kind of uh, heckling me for the fact that they didn't have any sales on Kobo yet, that's back when I was working at Kobo. And then two years later, they actually put up their hand, apologized for heckling me and said, you're right, I started to get sales nine months later and now my sales on Kobo are higher than the other two. It's second to Amazon. So again, a lot of patience is really, really important. You can't just dip in and out. Like Dan said, you can't just dip in with one book and, and, and test the waters. You really need to give readers, um, give to readers the, the ability to purchase and find you on those other platforms. Yeah. you. Uh, I'm going to give the advice that uh, you probably get from everybody, uh, but you should really pay attention to it, which is uh, focus on building your mailing list, and that will help you crack uh, wide markets. And then what, what you want to do is set up, uh, if you're going to do Facebook advertising, for example, uh, set up a series of ads, a whole campaign of ads that target the different readers, the different e-readers um, and devices, so that you can start getting people to get a freebie on your site, you know, a free short story or novella, something like that. Uh, to sign up for your list. And that's not, what that's going to do is help you grow your wide base so that when you do have books release, you are advertising to a captive audience. You're, you're advertising to a vetted audience. Um, that will help you grow that a little faster. So I tell people uh, pretty often to not really bother focusing on trying to sell through Facebook ads and, and elsewhere, but to focus instead on trying to build up that audience as much as possible. Build your platform as wide and deep as possible as quickly as you can. And now that will help. It is a long game though. It is, it's not going to be an overnight thing. Build, building your email list really is building your own book bub. And so, um, Kevin, for you, where all do you ask people to join your mail list? And you mentioned that you, you might give away a, a freebie to. Right. And I give, I give away a free, um, ebook. It's a short story, but it's a, I, tr I treat it exactly like a book. It's got a cover. It's edited. Everything is, exactly as I would do to release a book. Uh, it's exclusive on my website. I advertise it through all my social channels. Uh, I advertise it. We have a, our D2D author page, so there's a way to sign up for the mailing list on the author page. Uh, I have business cards. I have, car, I have like six different types of cards, and almost all of them have some way to find my, uh, my freebie. Uh, 
it's in my email signature. I mean, what, what you want to do is that, that thing needs to be everywhere. Um, and every time you talk to somebody, when I'm out, ask my wife, she, she has stopped rolling her eyes from all the eye strain. But uh, every time we're out and we meet people, uh, I introduce myself in some way, somehow I end up slipping in there that I'm an author. And uh, as soon as they, they get interested about it, I hand them one of those cards and say, you know, you can get a free book if you go to this website. So you just want to constantly try to build that. <laughs> Thank you. I want to go back to something Dan said, because uh, I'm, I'm positive people ask the question. Dan said, when we nominate titles for promotions, could you please elaborate on what that is? Oh, yeah. So uh, we work with all the retailers, library systems, uh, the subscription services to help them find books to promote to their readers that their readers might like. Um, right now we do it mostly through email and so we send out an email as we learn of opportunities from the retailers. Each of the opportunities has conditions or um, you know they're looking for a certain genre, they're looking for a certain type of book, um, they want it to have like beaches on the cover or things of that nature. And so we um, go through our list. Uh, basically, we look and see who on that retailer has been selling this year, and we send out emails to those people and let them know uh, if they have eligible books, if they would like to, for us to nominate their book. Um, with some of those, it requires a price reduction, and so they expect you to have it on sale uh, you know, over a weekend or over a week period um, where you actually have to change the price. Uh, with libraries, they generally will ask you to offer a percentage discount, and that one's really easy. We just let them know, you know, this book will be, you know, 30% off of the library list price for this period of time. Uh, and so we are nominating books for those. The best way uh, with Draft Digital to uh, be a part of those is just to keep an eye on your emails because we do email out those opportunities uh, to our users. Uh, and you want to make sure you have um, – as many books that are eligible as you can. Um, so pre-orders are a very important thing. Like uh, Apple runs a lot of uh, their promotions are centered around pre-order numbers. And so have a pre-order um, that will make you eligible for more, more types of promotion, promotions. Uh, have a box set because some of the different uh, promotions are just for box sets and bundles. Okay, thank you. Now, um uh, Holly, I believe, asked a question sort of as a follow-up to something Kevin said related to your free books. How do you, how do you distribute those free books? So uh, I, I use um, BookFunnel to, do, to distribute those. And our good friend, Damon Courtney, who happens to live like a few miles from me, um, but he, it's a fantastic service. If you haven't heard of it, uh, BookFunnel.com is the site. Uh, and what that allows you to do, and there is a there is a cost uh, to using the site. I think it's twenty dollars. I don't even remember what it costs. But um, what that allows you to do is uh, collect email addresses. Uh, you'll get an, a file with all those, or you can have them sent straight to your email management system. Uh, Mailchimp is one of those. I know a lot of people are kind of migrating from Mailchimp right now, but there are several that you can choose and. Um, if you have like an ad or link or something on your site or your email or social media, it'll send them to that form where they see a picture of the cover, a description of the book, and then you can actually just sign up right there. And it actually takes care of all the customer support of helping them get that book on their, their various e-readers. So great tool, book funnel. <laughs> I'm going to go collect uh, $25 from Damon for mentioning for that. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so I want to go into uh, a little bit more about marketing and we're talking about marketing to retailers, but a lot of folks have asked questions about what are some methods that authors can use to sell their books to library systems? You know, so for through draft to digital, you can get your books in overdrive Baker and Taylor and other library systems. And, is there a difference in how you promote uh, your eBooks available to libraries uh, or your print books available to libraries? So how do you sell your books into the library systems? So with libraries, um, kind of understanding how libraries acquire books is very handy. Um, for the most part, I, I say like the number one, like the cheap solution is let your readers know that your books are all available in the library systems now and let them know that they can request your books. So if, if you know they want to read your books to the library system, or if they think people in your town would enjoy your books, 
um, making sure that they know that they can request library uh, books at libraries is the best way to uh, start getting your name out there to the librarians. Um, librarians go to a number of, of trusted sources that help them acquire new content. Uh, library Journal is one of them. Uh, within specific genres, there are magazines that they follow. I know within a romance, uh, a lot of librarians used to follow Romantic Times. Um, within science fiction and fantasy, you might look at some of the different uh, magazines that are very popular there. That might be a good way to find the librarians that are doing the acquiring. Um, but, you, you know, I would start off making sure you're checking out what your local library provides and how they provide it, because that'll help you understand how libraries work with digital. Um, it is going to be a little bit different for print. Um, we really don't have a lot of data or experience yet. Uh, I don't feel like I've got good advice to tell you how to get print books in the libraries. Uh, the library systems will not buy a print-on-demand book uh, with a Amazon ISBN. Uh, and so having it available through D2D print or through Ingram uh, is going to be the you know, number one step to making sure the libraries might acquire your book is just having it available in those systems. Thank you. Uh, I want to add a little bit about that because I've recently moved from one city to another and what I've done is I've gone to the local um, library and I've sent them links. I've introduced myself. I've sent them links to my books. And, 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 and you can go to overdrive.com and search for your name or your titles or whatever. You can come up with a list of all uh, the ebooks and audiobooks that may be available under your name or your, your single book or however it is. And I have sent them a link to there. I've also given them the ISBNs of my books that I know are available through Ingram. Uh, some of them are available directly through Ingram. Some of them are available through uh, draft to digital print uh, beta uh, as well. I've, I've been around for a long time, so I have them available many, many different ways. But at the end of the day, all they care about is where they're going to order it from. And Ingram is the world's largest wholesaler. And I send them the ISBNs and say, I'm a local author. Here are some of my books. I'd be interested in, you know, because I write ghost stories, I could come in and do a free, uh, you know, ghost talk, uh, share some ghost stories this time of year. I also know a lot about the book industry. I'm happy to do a free workshop. So again, when you're talking to libraries, you can provide them links to the books. I would, I would recommend places like Overdrive, and there are other uh, library distributors, Baker and Taylor, et cetera, um, uh, Ingram, provide them as much information as possible to make it easy and attractive for them to want to bring in your book. And then maybe is there something you can offer for the community uh, that basically allows you to network and connect with the library? And, and, and again, it's not fast. It's not easy. Like the mailing lists, like selling on, on, on the non-Amazon platforms, it takes time and effort. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be curation uh, over the long period. Yeah, th something to keep in mind, by the way, is uh, libraries are just like any other market. If you want to, if you want to get into that market, you have to tailor marketing for it. So um, you're talking to librarians instead of the patrons at that point. Um, Dan's plan is the, uh, to me, the the most exciting and best way to go about it because it's always good to have customers, quote unquote, come in and request something. Uh, but you might also consider befriending librarians on uh, Twitter and elsewhere. Um, following uh, the American Library Association, uh, engaging in conversations uh, that are important to these people. And then as you become, again, this is sort of the insert yourself into the community idea. I mean, as you become more recognized and um, um, you're known as a friend of the libraries, it'll be a lot easier to interject that you, you too have books that libraries might be interested in. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you both. So I'm going to take a question Alexis has punted over to us from the Facebook. Uh, Dorothy asked, how is promoting nonfiction different from promoting fiction? Or, or is it different? It is different um, in, in some ways. Uh, a lot of the same tricks will work. You know, the, the ideas of getting involved in, uh, with the communities and all that stuff, that, all that stuff still works. Your mailing list is still always a good idea. One of the advantages that nonfiction tends to have over fiction uh, is that people go looking for answers and can come across your nonfiction a lot easier. Uh, on Amazon in particular, it's true because Amazon is really just a glorified search engine. So if you tailor your uh, book description to answer a specific question that is tied to your topic, um, that will help a great deal. Tailor your keywords. 
uh, and that sort of thing so that when people are looking for a specific answer on a specific topic, uh, there's a better chance that they'll stumble across your book. With fiction, um, it's all about the experience. So uh, this is a little harder, and <laughs> the organic search stuff doesn't work quite as easy. But it can, but it's not uh, it's not quite as fine tuned as it is with nonfiction. Uh, but in that case, everything you write about and produce regarding your fiction book, you want to parlay the experience that the reader will have uh, when they read it. So if they're going to have a romantic adventure, uh, you want to make sure you put that in the book description. Uh, you use it in marketing language. And uh, you know everywhere that the book is mentioned. Um, so those are the sort of the two major differences between those two. But otherwise, uh, the the standard marketing techniques are going to be the same across both. So you don't have to get too wild about it. I would say with nonfiction uh, content marketing is a little bit more effective, and so blogging. Um, being active on social media because people are looking for those answers in different places. Uh, maybe YouTube, right. um, podcasts, like there's so many podcasts dedicated to subjects. And so I would really look at, I know for us as a company, um, we've really worked with a lot of the podcasters out there within the publishing and the indie publishing community, uh, because that's been very effective for us. Um, with fiction, uh, the secret and you want to like write this down, just write series. It's by yeah. far um, going <laughs> to a lot easier. save you so many headaches. If you're writing individual standalone stories, they're so hard to market um, without a big budget like a traditional publisher might have. And so um, if you're not writing series, the, the secret juice to 99% of the, the really famous uh, blockbuster indie authors is writing in series. And by the way, if you've, already written a number of, bo of fiction books and you didn't write them as a series, um, you can you can find a way to brand those as if they are individual books within a series or within a universe or something. Um, there are, you know, I'm, I'm about to do this actually with quite a few of my books. Uh, thankfully, one thing I did do was I always put little Easter eggs in each of my books to tie them together uh, in one way or another. They're all in the same omniverse, you will say. Uh, but you could, even if it's something like um, create a label, create a brand. You know, uh, if you're a romance author and you've written, you know, four standalone romance books, uh, maybe you come up with, you know, um, it's something along the lines of like the, what, what was it, Sweet Valley High? And, you know, those are juvenile. But um, a, a brand that can encompass the books themselves. And then you market the brand. And that way, you can write whatever you want at that point, as long as you're able to fit it within the uh, this constructed universe that you've built. The books don't have to lead one to the other, but the reader needs to be able to know that they're going to get a similar experience with each book. It's very Stephen King of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I only steal from the best. <laughs> now, I want to go back to something you guys talked about, because it was a question that Michael asked live uh, in the chat, and it's a question that was asked repeatedly in the, in the previously set questions is, so when you're writing a series, uh, what do you recommend? Uh, so let's say you've, you've already written three books in the series. Should I release them all now? Should I do a timed release where I wait a certain amount of time? Should I just once the book is ready and edited and good to go, should I just release it now rather than wait six months for, for a bunch of them? Like what, there's so much conflicting advice out there. What, Man, if you can, if you are pay, can be patient and release books on a schedule, it's going to benefit you a lot more than releasing them all at once or as soon as they're ready. Um, I am not that patient, but uh, I do give this advice. So, but if you can write, you know, three to five books ahead of time, and then release them one at a time, uh, what what's interesting is people get kind of excited. If they like that book and they want the next one, and they can, they see that it's going to it's available for pre order, they'll go ahead and pre order. Um, and then you, because you're producing regularly, some sales channels uh will you can get a benefit for that i know amazon does i think others do as well mark you could tell us if kobo does but they like to see that read through and they'll help you promote basically uh so it's really a good idea to go ahead and time it out and the metadata can help you right so the metadata example, through draft to digital you put in your series and make sure you number them because i know yeah. retailers like kobo take that data 
and try to upsell it. You'll actually get emails from retailers that say, hey, did you know book two is out? We, we know you have book one. Right. That kind of thing, which is that's what I mean. Like the the sales channels themselves will give you a hand, especially if if a book does very well. So, um, and you might also, by the way, try to make each book uh, capable of standing on its own, uh, even if it is part of a series, uh, because that gives it makes it a lot easier for readers to jump in on a series at a, at any given point. Um, and uh, you know, it doesn't. You don't have to. You don't have to wrap every storyline up with each book in order to do this by the way you can have a through line uh but as long as the the book itself feels like a complete story uh, a reader will be satisfied with it and if they find out there are three books ahead of it then they're far more likely to go buy those three books okay thanks and uh we just have a question via facebook from carol hey carol we know you uh and and it's related to ddd print and it's related to Amazon extended distribution. So the question is, does DDD print get us into the extended distribution via Amazon, i.e. Canada, Amazon, hey, Canada, uh, the store fits under that, I believe. So if I leave extended distribution unchecked in my Amazon print and use DDD print, does DDD print fill the extended distribution market? Mr. Dan, you were going to answer that one, I think. Yes, it is completely separate from uh, what Amazon considers their extended distribution, uh, but it has the same reach as the extended distribution. It gets you to the international. Probably better reach because people don't, well, other bookstores don't want to buy from Amazon. They want to buy from Ingram, right? They want to buy from right. a, a wholesaler, not from the person trying to put them out of business. Right. Is that mean to say? No, I think, yeah, I think you're, you're right on. Yes, but that's why I like it. Okay. I'm going to get really mean next week or next yeah. month. We're going to have month to get even meaner. Ask us uh, I want to, I want to post this question from Jenny. Who said, uh, any other recommended sites besides, so everyone knows BookBub. Any other recommended sites besides BookBub? I've had two featured deals in a smaller category, but mm -hmm. it's a shot in the dark for the more competitive ones. What other, what other sites have been working for authors for those kinds of promos? Well, there's been uh, Free Booksy and Bargain Booksy are, are two popular ones. Uh, Fussy Librarian is another, uh, another one that works well. There, there are a ton of them out there. Um, you, can, you could probably just do a quick Google of something along the lines of uh, services like BookBub and, <laughs> and click through. Uh, and you want to make sure they're reputable. I, I've been playing around with a few new ones. I'm not ready to, to announce live yet. Um, but hopefully they work, they pan out. Uh, and I may do a blog post down the road that, that uh, lists a whole bunch of these pr uh, promotion sites for authors. I think that would probably be a good one. I think it also varies a little bit by um, genre. So you know, even in BookBub, they have different sizes of lists for different genres. Um, so I would ask within your peer group, like finding your peer group in social media through like Facebook groups or a forum, uh, other people writing what you write and asking them what's been effective for them because I've seen people say, oh, uh, this particular email blast was not at all good for me. I didn't make my money back. And then other people uh, where they sold way more than uh, they, you know, they got a really good return on their investment. So I think it does vary a little bit. Thank you. I uh, want to take a twist over to audiobooks. So there were many, many questions about audiobooks because we do partner with Find Away Voices. Some of the questions were, you know, does D2D, will you distribute audiobooks for me? And I know we have the answer to that one, uh, so I'll let you do that one. But then uh, how, how do you promote audiobooks? Should I sign a seven-year exclusivity deal with ACX or should I use someone like Find Away Voices? Um, and then the last one is, uh, will, will you be including uh, audiobook links in books to read? So... That's that's sort of the audiobook blast that I'm uh, sending out. Who wants to uh, who wants to start with that? I'll start with the the general part of it. Uh, Draft Digital does not directly distribute audiobooks, but we've partnered with Findaway. Uh, Findaway can both help you with production. So if you don't already have the audiobook, they can help you find a narrator and you know, make an awesome awesome uh, audiobook. Um, with distribution, if you've already got one and you, you for whatever reason, you can't uh, distribute it uh, yourself directly. Uh, for instance, if you're in a country where you can't go directly to ACIs or go directly to some of the places, uh, they have a huge distribution network worked out. And so they can help you with distribution as well. Um, if you go in through draft to digital, they will waive the $49 uh, fee 
uh, that they normally charge to uh, start a project for production. Uh, so that's a, a little uh, thing you get if you guys are draft to digital with that. Um, we are working on audiobook links for universal book links. So we're very excited about that. We'll be having that fairly soon, I believe. Um, that's another part of that. The last question. one was seven oh. years with, with Amazon. So, uh, or, we, or do I go wide on my audiobook? We think that's one of the most important choices you have to make right now. Uh, with you know, going exclusive with your ebook, it's a 90 day deal. That's not a long time. So I don't think you can really make the wrong choice there. Uh, with seven years, it's hard to say what the audiobook market's going to look like in seven years. If you think about seven years ago, uh, Barnes and Noble was a much, uh, larger part of the book industry than it is now. Uh, a lot of things have changed. And so seven years from now, we anticipate that will happen as well. One of the really exciting things that's opening up in the past year is that, um, say with Apple Books, uh, you're no longer, uh, they're no longer exclusively working with Audible. So you can now put your audiobooks into the Apple system through someone else other than Audible. Uh, the neat thing about that is you have pricing control and you have that pricing control at uh, the Kobo audiobook uh, site. You've got pricing control at Barnes and Noble. Uh, you've got uh, companies like BookBub that are starting to uh, their own services like Chirp, uh, which is designed around how to promote and market a, a audiobook. And you can start playing around with pricing promotions, which is something Audible has always forced you into uh, their pricing guidelines and then into that single credit uh, system where someone purchases a credit and then they can trade that in for any audiobook, no, regardless of what cost it was originally. Uh, so that kind of made an artificial market for longer books. Uh, shorter books didn't get picked up as much because if I'm going to spend an, a, a credit from Audible uh, and I can get a book for 20 hours or I can get a book for five hours, I'm going to go up to 20 hours nearly all the time. Uh, so all these things are going to lead to a better audiobook market in the future. And so I would encourage you not to sign exclusive with Audible. And Dan, you made me think of something that I thought I would share. Um, my very first audiobook that I produced before Find a Way was available, and, and it cost me close to $3,000 to produce. I still haven't made my money back off of that, and that's been you know three-plus years ago that I created it. But what I did do when Find a Way launched is I took some shorter works, um, you know, did digital chat books or like three short stories that are themed together or a 10,000 words short story. And I've, and you know, through draft to digital to find a way, you know, so it didn't cost me the additional $49 setup fee that waived that. I was able to find professional narrators to help me produce. And, and again, for just a few hundred dollars, I was able to create audio books that were shorter, maybe, you know, an hour long, an hour and a half long. And, I haven't sold them through Audible or Kobo or Google or Apple or any of the larger players, but I've made my money back selling them through the library markets, through, through the various library markets, Bibliotheca and, um, and Hoopla and High Books and a whole bunch of other places that we, we never really talk about uh, as indie authors. So it may be a way for people to experiment with getting into audio, just so they can feel what it's like if they've never done it before without having to spend thousands of dollars uh, on, on the process as well. I thought I'd share that one. I thought it might be useful. I like to spend tens of dollars on processes. <laughs> um, and I just want to throw in that you shouldn't, if anybody ever asks you for a seven year commitment, unless they are a spouse, uh, you should say no. Uh, there's just no, there's no, I can't see anything valuable in that. Um, especially now. I mean, I, I understand why that happened. I, I fell for it too. Uh, and wish I hadn't. Um, you fell for a spouse. I fell for a spouse. Yeah. I met her. Uh, she's really nice. She is really nice. <laughs> you would all fall for my spouse. Um, so, <clears throat> the uh, the other thing, and I kind of want to add on to what uh, Dan was saying. Uh, what's interesting now with Find a Way and the and the reach that they have, and the way they they've set up that program. I mean, they'll. I believe they'll let you even price down to free. Um, if you so if you ha if you happen to have recorded your own audiobook or you were fine with paying someone or whatever, uh, you can use some of the same strategies that used to work for us in ebooks in this sort of emerging market. Um, and because it is, uh, you can actually now sell shorter works uh, when you start to break out of this credit um, model. Um, you can start converting uh, short stories and novellas and things like that. Uh, and bundle series together. There's a whole lot of options you get. 
for this now that you did not have with Audible's system. We, we really want to break the whole credit model. Uh, it's just a bad, it's a bad model for everybody. It's a bad model for the readers. They don't get it to uh, experience shorter books as often. They don't get to discover new authors as often. Uh, and it's a terrible model for uh, the authors. So, Thank you. <laughs> so uh, this question came up a lot. Uh, people get frustrated because, you know, in, in the only way to sell books is I have to get a book bub. And when I get a book bub, I have to log into five different websites and change my price. If only I could schedule my price promotion somehow. I wish there was an answer there. Um, is that possible? So that's part of the question, uh, which I know um, we have a good answer for. But uh, the other one is, are there ways to promote books without changing your price, without having to do those kinds of promotions? Uh, I'll, I'll handle the first part. <laughs> I, I would say um, st some of the retailers will let you schedule uh, price promotions in advance. Um, not all the retailers have that support. Um, at draft to digital we handle it. Like we've built code to both handle it at the retailers that can do it uh, and then to send it at, at certain times to the retailers that can't. And so, that is something you send us the price change. You tell us when you want the price to change and we handle that all on the back end for you. Just you tell us once. And as far as can you do promotions without price changes, you absolutely can. Um, you can participate in you know, one, one thing that I, I do often, although we do tend to lower prices for this, uh, but you could do it without lowering your price. And that is to get involved with uh, a bunch of other authors and do a cross promotion uh, maybe for like books. I've been talking to a handful of thriller writers about doing an Atlantis themed uh, promotion, for example. We don't necessarily have to lower our price to do that. We're just going to send out to our mutual lists uh, a list of all, all of us who are participating and the books that um, are all themed under, under Atlantis. So if your readers happen to like that topic, they, they might check that out. So you don't necessarily have to change your prices. Uh, but you can take heart in knowing that if you do lower your price and you get involved in a successful promotion, uh, you'll probably end up making more overall. Um, you, you can always change your price back, you know, immediately after that promotion. And a lot of times you'll have this sort of a momentum going, uh, because as you sort of rise in the ranks on various sites, people discover your books a lot easier. Um, and so you'll start you'll probably make back what you quote lost, but you really aren't losing anything by lowering your price. Uh, you, you, you're you just gaining new readers who might buy more of your stuff. I want to add to that as well. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I saw a stat at, uh, at a conference from BookBub that said that there's something like 70% of their most active customers buy books at full price. Yeah. Uh, and, and with BookBubs, if you can't get a feature deal, which is kind of like, you know, the, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, that winning ticket to get you into the factory, you can always, um, uh, there's ways to buy ads and target specific readerships. And from my own experience and, and from authors that I've heard from, based on this stat on BookBub, you can advertise, I know that uh, Kobo and Apple customers, for example, are willing to pay full value for a good book that matches their, their, their target demographics. They're, a lot of times people are signed up to BookBub as readers just to find a good book to read. And, and chances are your full priced book at $5.99 or $4.99 is still probably uh, you know, 80% cheaper than the, the similar book from a larger publisher. So it's still a good deal to that customer. So that's something to consider. Now, um, the question came up on Facebook from Daniel. Uh, and he says, uh, is there any chance that D2D could do with reviews what you've done with UBLs? I have a place where readers can post a review that puts it out to all the D2D vendors. Uh, I realize this is computer encoding with websites, but it'd be great to have a single place where reviews could be. And, and I imagine he's saying rather than always sending people to Amazon for their reviews. So we, we get this question a lot, and so we wanted to address it. Unfortunately, uh, those reviews are generally copyrighted. Uh, Amazon, for instance, all the Amazon ones, you can't post them anywhere. Um, and so unless you can get the reader to go post that review again somewhere else, um, you can't just copy a review and post it somewhere else. Um, again, we get that all the time. That would be awesome. If, the, if there was a, a way to get all the reviews in one place, that would be incredible. Unfortunately, it's a legally 
probably never going to be feasible. This is basically allowing people to copy and paste reviews from other sites. But what about, uh, I'm, I wonder if he's asking, what about me as a reader? I go to books to read to find books to read. What if I want to leave reviews on a site like that? Um, so that I can, so when you're looking at the book, you see all the retailers you can buy it from. And then you see generic reviews, not Amazon yeah, that, reviews, not yeah. Goodreads reviews. That's what he's talking about is yeah. we, there's no way to do that legally right now because the, those sites own the copyright to those reviews. No, I mean, I, as a reader, submit my review. Oh yeah. You're reading books to read, not yeah. copying it from Amazon or anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, that, that was originally what Goodreads kind of was. Um, there are other sites that are like that. Um, it's just that generally people want to see the review on the site that they're buying the item at. Um, I, I think adding reviews on the books to read is something we definitely look at, but hard to say how effective it would be. Uh, another question along those lines comes up that says, what about coupons and having a buy page through draft to digital Like, why can't I just buy the books off of books to read? Building a store is expensive, and competing with Amazon uh, with a bookstore is doubly uh, expensive. It's good. Uh, we're not thinking, looking at it right now. Um, we have seen some of our authors; they're starting to do stuff like uh, direct sales, uh, working with partners like BookFunnel, or uh, you know, directly working with some of the different uh, platforms that let you uh, sell directly. Um, right now, we're not looking at doing it on our end. Okay. Now go back to reviews again. This is a generic question that came in a lot prior to the, the sem seminars. How does a beginning author, you know, I've got my one book up. How do I get reviews? How do I get people to review it on Amazon, on Goodreads, on Kobo, on Apple, on Nook, et cetera? Where, where, where does an author start? You know, it's, I just did an entire podcast episode about this, and it's the stupidest, simplest thing you ask because <laughs> authors forget to ask. So um, put, you know, you want to put something in the back of your book, a uh, call to action that says, if you like this book, please review it. Uh, and it, you can uh, use the universal book links to let, allow them to find where they can review it. That way you're not violating terms of service, uh, by the way, uh, by mentioning certain retailers. Um, ask your mailing list regularly. Hey, if you've read any of my books, I'd really, it would really help me out. Uh, it, it, it's very effective to give people uh, a reason, especially if it's something that allows them to sort of be a hero and help someone out and do a good deed. Um, if you read it, there's a book called Influence you should read that, that talks about this. But people are more likely to, to carry something, uh, carry out a task you've asked them to do if you give them just even just any reason to do it. Uh, so make sure that you are regularly asking the people on your platform. That's your mailing list, your social media sites. Uh, even when, uh, if you happen to meet readers in person, uh, you know, hey, did you review the book on Amazon or elsewhere? You know, I'd appreciate that. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, you, you know, there's no, there's no other way. <laughs> there's no other magic way uh, to convince people to start leaving reviews. You just got to make sure you're asking them every chance you get. A lot of times readers don't realize how important uh, reviews are to a creator. Um, I am the type, I hate writing reviews. It's just not something I enjoy doing. However, I go out of my way for the creators that I really love to make sure I leave a review. And then I'm the type that also posts that review at multiple platforms just because I don't want one platform to dominate everything. Yeah. I have a call to action in the back of every single book that says, um, here are three things you could do that, that would really help me out. And the first of those is to leave a review on the, of the book. Uh, and then I also ask them to get on my mailing list and to tell everyone they know uh, who might enjoy the book uh, to go out and get the book. And if, you, if you're consistently asking those three questions, that's the best marketing you're going to get. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost anything. People, someone I think was asking about ways to promote that don't cost anything. That doesn't cost you anything more than the effort to type it on a page. Uh, and they're the three most important questions you can, or th three more, most important favors you can ask of your readers. Well, speaking of that, that's a perfect tie-in because we're getting close to the very end of this. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Kevin and Dan and Alexis. 
uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, conversation. I want to thank all of you participants watching live, as well as those of you who submitted questions in advance. No, we didn't get to all of them, but of course we'll be doing this every month. We already have one scheduled for uh, next month. We're going to be sharing with you. And also I wanted to um, say, if you found value in this webinar, please feel free to share it. So Kevin will be posting it to our blog in, in just a few days. Feel free to share it, uh, Facebook page. Let people know how awesome a draft to digital is at building tools for authors because the more authors we have uh, giving us feedback on how to improve, how to make things better, uh, the better off the tools can be for everyone uh, in order to sell one and everyone prospers. So, so like Kevin said, we're not asking for a review. We're just asking for you to share this out hey. there. Because hey, you got if you don't uh, if you don't ask, you may not get right. We, we would take a review uh, if you want to like us or leave a review on Facebook. Uh, that helps us too. Yeah, never never harms. Now, speaking of which, now uh, live attendees are going to get an opportunity to have a one on one half hour session completely for free with one of us wonderful people. Um, and that's something we're going to be. How are we going to be sharing that with folks? That's a good question. I did we set up the link in advance this time? I didn't. I did not set up the link in advance. Okay. So what we're it's going, going to, to be? Do, <laughs> give me two seconds. <laughs> we set something up. He's going to set the link. I knew up. I'd forgotten something, guys. I am uh, so you sorry. Know, uh, yeah, well, that's okay. Um, but in the meantime, uh, take advantage of that. Yeah, you know what? The last time we did the uh, um, the half hour sessions, they were fantastic. We all had chat, chance uh, chances to chat and ask very specific questions about you and your personal needs. Because I know a lot of the questions that I'm even seeing coming up live are, you know, I have a book in this series and this is what's going on and that's what's going on. Well, it's really difficult for us to answer that as part of a large group because we want to provide answers that people can adapt into their own settings. But when we're doing one-on-one -on -one with you, we'll, you know, we'll sit there and look at your synopsis with you and, 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 and offer advice or your book cover or, or whatever or say, well, here's how I use Twitter to sell or here's what I've heard. Um, as well, we'll also be providing links in the Facebook page because that'll still be there. Uh, we'll be providing links to some amazing content that Kevin has already written on the blog. There's some great YouTube videos because some people are visual learners, some people want to hear it, and some people also want to just read articles, which is why the last webinar, we have the, the transcript uh, of, the, of, of what we said, including all the ums, uh, as well as, as the video, depending on how you want to do that. So you can kind of do a find search, say, hey, I'm looking for tips on how to sell on Apple. Did they talk about Apple? And, and then you can do that sort of find uh, as well. And uh, there's lots of funny comments coming in <laughs> on the back end. And uh, so I got this. I got this sewn up, by the way, and it's uh -huh. back. You can you can sign up for the free consoles by going to bitly bit.ly slash d to d consult, and we will put that in all the little comment sections. Uh, and it is going to be open for what we do 24 hours last time something like that 24 so, hours So yeah book it. Uh, we've made our calendars completely wide open We've told our families we're not going to see them for days <laughs> at a time. We're wearing diapers at our desks We're basically trying to get like uh, you know, whatever liquid I, liquid. I think this time I've actually <laughs> fixed it last time I forgot to hit the little button that that evenly distributes them through everybody and out of like 60s consults I think I did like 50 uh, and, I kind of liked it that way. Yeah, it worked really well for Dan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to say real quick, uh, if any of you will be at the uh, RWA uh, conference for the U.S. and uh, New York next week, I'll be there. Uh, so uh, hit me up. i uh, love to meet some of you. Um, or if you're just in the New York City area, let me know. I'll be there from uh, Wednesday till Sunday. Excellent. We got people asking me to repeat the link. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash um, D, D to D consult. <laughs> and I've been dropping it in the chat, so you, can, you might be able to find it there if you're not seeing it. Uh, one more thing we want to mention is that we are going to be doing this again. You guys did mention this while I wasn't paying attention, were you? Uh, but we didn't spe specify when and where and how. We are going to be doing this again August 29th, uh, and we're going to actually be all together in one room uh, for that one. Same uh, background for all three of us. We're going to just awesome. we're going to just ca carry all these backgrounds with us <laughs> and set them up behind us on little stands. And uh, we're working on getting a special guest for that one. So um, we haven't landed specifically on a topic yet, or did we? Did we land on a topic? No topic yet. Um, okay. I think we don't say it's going to be a mean one. So. And chances are we'll talk about marketing because we never not talk about marketing. We will talk about marketing. <laughs> so if you didn't get your question answered this time, uh, pop in there, say hello. 
Uh, and we're going we're all going to be at WriterCon in Oklahoma City uh, on that the the day following that webinar, so uh, August thirtieth through the rest of that weekend. So if you are in Oklahoma City and you're going to WriterCon, or if you're not yet, go sign up. And David uh, Cochran's going to be there as well, right? So David all the way from overseas. So. Yeah, we brought him in along with his beard, and uh, we are all. But you just got a three... seat on the plane, right? He got his own seat. His yeah. beard's in first class. <laughs> okay, <He's the> coach. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna all be on panels. Uh, or, or some of us are gonna be on panels. I don't know who's on panel. We're gonna be talking to all kinds of folks at that conference. So you might want to check it out. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for attending and asking some brilliant questions. And thanks for uh, thanks for being an author and putting your words out into the world. Guys, uh, we'll chat with you later. Calling uh, now. We're gonna call this. Meeting to a close. Thank you. Farewell. <laughs>